Hi there. In this video, we'll be taking a look at five amazing moves by one of the most spectacular grandmasters that has ever lived, and that's no other than Latvian grandmaster Alexei Shirov. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about Alexei at the end of this video, but for now, let's get on with the games. This position was reached in one of Shirov's games. He was playing black against Kochnoi. This was in Madrid, 1996, and it's black to move. Now, if we asked a, a well-grounded um, positional grandmaster what would he play in this position, chances are he'd say a move like queen to c7. And now, this move makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, this knight is not really doing very much on f6 anymore. So, the, now the queen moves to c7 so as to free the d7 square and the knight can go to d7 now and then from d7 either to um, c5 or e5 which are both very good squares. Now of course white doesn't need to keep still. In fact in this position this bishop is not really doing very much so perhaps white can go bishop to h3. The idea being that when the knight gets to d7 since that knight is going to become such a powerful piece on e5 or c5 maybe we'll get rid of it. There's also the possibility that, you know, white will play a check on e6. So, you know, that's how the game might have continued between two reasonable players. However, who says that imagination has anything to do with logic and reason? <laughs> Let's see what Alexei Shirov played. In this position, he didn't play queen to c7. He chose knight takes e4 which is a pretty amazing move in itself, although this is not the main amazing move that I wanted to show you. Okay, um, this sacrifice is a little hard to understand because, you know, what exactly does black get after pawn takes? You know, he can't play f3, and, um, you know, his pieces look kind of well poised, but, you know, not enough to create any dangerous threats. But here's the point. Now black goes queen to g4, threatening f3. And f3 is not such an easy move to stop. For example, if we go king here, you know, to avoid the pin, f3 just about wins for black. And um, moves like queen here are pointless because the queen would simply retreat, I guess, to g6. Then the queen is on and f3, f3 is next and the bishop would be pinned. Or, um, I don't know, a move like um, rook f3, well, black can simply take on e4. So, as you can see, it's not so easy to stop the threat of, um, of f3. In the game, white played h3, which is probably not the best move. Um, Alexei Shirov vandalized this position and apparently queen h3 gave white the best chances. In the game, this is what happened. h3, queen to g5. Now f3 is a threat again, as we've seen, so king to h1. And in this position, we go queen here. And again, f3 becomes a dangerous threat because, you know, if the bishop takes at some point, after all the exchanges, then h3 is on and white's getting checkmated. So in this position, um, Kochnoi now went king to g1. And... Here, f3 doesn't quite work yet, um, so because um, white can simply take it. Um, and this is what Shirov came up with, rook to f6. And this is a truly amazing move because, you know, you've got to see well ahead that this, this is actually going to work. You know, um, black doesn't seem to be threatening anything. Okay, yeah, the idea, of course, is rook to g6. But even after that, it's not very clear what's happening because, you know, once you put the rook here, if you go f3, I can always give back the exchange and, and white still seems safe. But this position is already very, very difficult for white. And that's what makes this such an amazing move. You know, because no matter how hard you look at this position, it's still really difficult to understand what's going on. Let's see how the game continued. Bishop to d4, rook to g6. And here, the best chance was probably queen d3. Although, this position is already better for black after queen to g5. In the game, Kochnoi went king to h1. And now, um, Shirov sacrificed his rook with rook takes. King takes and rook takes pawn. He's now a whole rook down, but the attack is unstoppable. 
okay? The rook is coming here, there's the possibility of f3. Um, there's not very much white can do anymore. So in the game, white now played bishop to g1, rook to e2, check. The king went to the corner, and then a simple move like bishop here is deadly. In this position, Kochnoi now went bishop f2, but he resigned after bishop here. This is a truly remarkable game. Um, after king here, then simply queen here. And if the king moves queen g2 or bishop g3, then rook to g2. And now this is a truly remarkable game because, um, you know, it's, it's not the old sacrifice on h7 followed by knight to g5. It's, it's not a, you, you sacrifice the piece and it's not very clear what's going on. It's, it's one of those positions that only Shirov understands and the rest of the world can just watch. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's incredible. Okay, let's move on. Let's see the next position. And um, this position happened in 1993. It's a game between um, Shirov and Chernin. Okay, and um, Chernin has many pawns for his peers. He's a piece down, but you know, look at all those pawns. That's a beautiful pawn mass, you know. And yes, white pieces do look threatening, but you know, those pawns look so solid. You know, what are we going to do here? Yes, I know, a move like um, Shirov's knight to h5 doesn't really seem that difficult, but what's difficult is what comes next. After f5, he sacrifices the rook on d5. I mean, we, this is dynamite. You know, the, the pawn structure, black's pawn structure is being dynamite, and it's, it's incredible because after pawn takes, what follows is rook takes f5. And look at Black's pawns. Only a moment ago, they were all rock solid. And just a few moves later, after knight here, f5, rook takes, pawn takes, rook takes, f5, they're all gone. This position, um, it's completely winning for white now. For example, if pawn takes, check, king to f8, we take on f5, king there, check, and we get in checkmated. Well, black is anyway. <laughs> So after rook takes f5, um, Grandmaster Chernim now played knight to f8, rook takes. Now the combined attack of those bishops and the rook, um, you know, material is just about even here. Um, it, it, this position is completely lost for black. Bishop takes, bishop here, queen to g4, pinning, king here, we exchange, and rook here, bishop here. Queen to c3, rook to d1, queen to f6, and rook to d7. Rook e7, chain, exchange, bishop takes, queen e5, and rook here, e5, rook takes e5. Now, beautiful game um, by Shirov. Not h5, it all started with not h5, but after f5, he continues with rook takes, pawn takes knight, and then rook takes f5. I mean, you know, I call that destroying the pawn structure, destroying the enemy defenses. Beautiful, beautiful game. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what happened in the next game. Now, this is not a difficult game because, um, you know, the uh, the move that um, um, Shirov came up with now is, is actually not that difficult to find. But what's harder to, um, to find or to understand is the resulting position. You know, like most people would, you know, would consider a move like queen to c2, threatening checkmate here. Um, the thing is, after pawn takes, knight takes, renewing the threat, g6 seems completely forced now. Then knight takes pawn. Okay, now this guy is on, uh, the rook and the queen are on. Okay, so taking is forced. Okay. Um, so queen takes pawn check. We're not only doing a check, if the queen blocks, then we have queen takes and these guys on, and then we have all those pawns to compensate for the piece, which is four pawns for a piece, more than enough. So the king has to come to h8, and then rook here, okay? Yeah, so far, so good. I mean, you know, this is fairly easy. You know, we've seen sacrifices like this before. Um, but after knight f4, which is forced, you know, because the rook is coming to, to h4, and, and that's really the only move, Black can play. Rook takes, rook takes, um, queen check, 
king here, and then queen takes f4. Um, assessing this position is a difficult part. Right? Yes, most people could come up with sacrifice on um, with queen c2, but would they have the guts to um, walk into this position? Um, would they be capable of um, uh, assessing this position correctly? Let's see how the game continued. Queen to f7, queen to g4, king to f8, queen to h4. You know, black's king is exposed. If at any point the rook, you know, joins the game, joins the attack like this, or like this, uh, obviously things would look very, very difficult for black. So, king here, black's trying to go, rook here. You can block the check on g5 with queen to g6. Um, he doesn't do it now because, um, probably, probably because of this, queen e3, and then, you know, if necessary, I've got bishop e4. So queen g5 check, king here, rook to d1, maybe the rook can come to d6, rook to f8, hitting f2, f4, knight to a5, and then bishop h3, and, um, Shirov went on to win. But um, yeah, um, the whole move, you know, queen to c2 from a pretty ordinary looking position and being able to assess the, uh, the resulting position was very, very impressive in this game. Okay, let's move on and let's see our fourth position. In this position, um, Shirov now came up with a move that, you know, we would all consider, but just how we would all um, reject. So in this position, it does work. Rook takes pawn. Of course, if pawn takes knight f6, it's a knight fork. Um, we can all see that. But what happens if simply queen takes? Well, the point is now we have knight check, king here, and then bishop to g5. And this position is now completely lost for black. That queen has nowhere to go, like if you move your queen to g6, then queen to h4, and black is getting checkmated. And if black decides to give up material, like, I don't know, queen there, queen check, I mean, queen takes, pawn takes, well, we've got a whole variety of um, different ways to win here. I guess this is one of the easiest, and and I guess now simply rook here, okay, and the rook is coming to h4. And you can't go in g6, of course, because I can simply take it, and that is pinned. Or, of course, if you take here, I don't even have to take back. I can just go rook here and the king is getting checkmated anyway. So this was um, Alex Ishiro playing wide against Grandmaster Wan Hao. I mean, you know, we're talking about um, a 2700 rated Grandmaster. Um, the game was played in Russia in 2009. Beautiful move. Rook takes h6 um, in this position. A very spectacular move. Okay, not that difficult, I must admit. And finally... Um, I'm going to show you a complete game by Shirov against Grandmaster Tivyakov. And this game is, is actually very interesting because Tivyakov plays this funny variation um, of the center counter. Um, it's his variation. He's, he's played it in, in hundreds of games, hundreds of games. And he's scored incredibly well. You know, he um, I think he's even published a book, whole book on it. Um, but really, can, can this move... Be considered a serious variation. Uh, personally, I don't think so. I think it's a uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe you can get away with it, and, and you know, in some some games, maybe you can equalize. But seriously, I mean, you know, what's the world coming to in um, with moves like this? You know, I, I can't believe it. Anyway, so d4, knight f6, knight f3, c6, knight e5, knight bd7, f4, knight b6. And this is old book, and um, um, Shirov had probably noticed that um, Tivyakov kept getting very good results um, once he got the, uh, the bishop to f5 in these positions. So he, he played this move. It's not an original move. It had been played before, okay? But what follows is pretty new. <laughs> okay, so black now goes knight to d5, and then bishop to g2. Previously, only g5 had been played. So he played this new move, and um, by not having played g5, um, the f5 square is not weak. Okay, so Shirov is making sure that black can never play bishop to f5. Okay, that's the main idea that's driving his 
um, um, his moves in, in this at this stage of the game. So Black now went g6 and g5 now. Knight takes, pawn takes, knight d5, c4, knight to c7, c5, and the queen comes to d8. And at first sight, black's doing very well here because he's going to get his bishop to f5, then he can play a bishop here, he can castle, his position looks incredibly solid. You know, yes, maybe at some point white can go um, c4 and, you know, maybe later on um, d5. It's not going to be so easy to achieve. Like, you know, maybe black could go... Um, e6, the moment that, that white goes e4, but um, Shirov had a completely different idea. And here comes his amazing move. He now went d5. Beautiful idea. Okay, the basic idea is to open up the um, b2 to h8 diagonal. Okay, but we're giving up a central pawn. Is that really worth it? Well, it turns out that it is. Now, the threat, of course, is to take on c6. You know, combined with the bishop on g2, it's a very powerful threat. So, um, and there is a problem, because if you take with the knight, then we can simply go f4. The knight has to retreat. We trade queens, and then there's this knight fork. So, it seems that black has to take back with the pawn. But then c4, you know, increasing the pressure against this guy. Again, black can't take because we exchange queens and then that pawn is on. And um, what else is there? Does black really have any other moves here? Like, moves like this seem completely out of the question because we've got tactical ideas such as this. And if the bishop takes, then black's getting checkmated, of course. So, after c4, black now went e6. But then Shirov played bishop to g2, and now we see the power of the diagonal. We threaten a very nasty discover attack. So black now went bishop to g7, probably his best chance. I mean, if you make a move like rook to g8, then knight to g4 is incredibly annoying. Okay, threatening to come to f6. So bishop to g7, knight to c6, hitting the queen. The pawn takes, we trade, the rook comes here. And then bishop here. Now those two bishops are incredibly powerful, particularly the uh, dark squared bishop. Look at that bishop. Look at that knight. Incredibly passive. Look at those two beautiful white bishops. Positionally, this position is already winning for black for white. So black now went bishop to d7, white castles, rook here, queen to a4, and white simply threatening to challenge the um, the b file like this. Rook takes. Rook takes. And now rook here, a very simple positional move. Rook here, the check on b1 is completely harmless because we can simply go bishop f1. So black now went bishop here. And in this position, Shirov went queen here, hitting the knight. The king goes here and then bishop to e4. Black simply can't move here. He's completely tied up. White simply threatening to go, I don't know, um, rook here and rook takes pawn, or bishop takes, followed by rook here, or even rook to b1, followed by, I mean, rook to f1, followed by rook to b1. The position is completely lost. Um, queen has to stay here protecting the knight. Black has no squares for his pieces. This was a terrible defeat for, um, for Tivyakov. And, um, and I'm not sure, um, if Tivyakov has played. Yeah, I think he has. But um, yeah, he had to find something against this this variation because um, um, Shirov's um, idea was so powerful. Um, it was just amazing. Let's look at that d5 again. Beautiful move. Fantastic idea. Okay. I don't think Tivyakov has ever lost a game like this um, with this variation ever. Okay. And, and yeah, as I said at the beginning, um, you know, sometimes you, you look at the games won by Grandmaster Carlsen and, you know, uh, sometimes he plays those 100 moves, you know, from a dead equal um, position and then his opponents are so tired because he's feeder and, you know, they make a blunder and he wins like that. And tournament organizers uh, all over the world, you know, they invite people like, like Carlsen. Of course, he's the best player in the world, but... You know, maybe, maybe the world, the chess world, the um, um, the people who really like chess want to see more games like the ones Shirov plays. He's, 
games are pure imagination. They're pure dynamite. They're beautiful games. Um, they're attacking games. Who cares about you know having 50 more ELO rating points or not? The world wants to see more of Shirov. Tournament organi organizers take note. Thanks. See the subscribe button? Hug it. Show it some love. But above all, click it. And don't forget to visit our website, chess.clinic.